that, I am going to hand this over to Michelle. Do you want to start recording? Um, I and, just yeah. started recording and then also we wanted to do just a quick poll to understand where people were at at this point. Yeah. So I'm launching that now. And so if you could just let us know how familiar are you with Microsoft Power Automate, just so we have an understanding where folks in the room are at. Thank so you. you about, nope, you're okay. good. Give you about 10 more seconds to answer. And I will share the results. All right. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and uh, share my screen. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to end polling, share the results. And so we have, okay, quite a few people. I, I just heard of it now. And so <laughs> You've got a blank canvas here, Michelle. You can you can wow us with everything that you can do. Um, so, looks like we're definitely at the just now hearing of it or on the introductory phase of it. And so it'll be um, a novice user and couple. We've got a couple people that rock it. Yeah, so that'll be that'll be good to see as well. So All right. That's where we are at, and I will stop sharing this so that you can take over. And then just a reminder to folks, if you'd like, if you have questions along the way, um, Michelle will have uh, points in time where she'll pause and ask for questions. If you'd like to enter your questions into the chat, then when she has a pause, um, I can go ahead and we may not get through all of them depending on how many questions we have, but I'll try and get through as many as I can. Um, I can read off some questions and pose those to Michelle, um, as we move through, but if something's a hot item and I don't cover it, please feel free to, to speak up. Okay, Michelle, I think it's all yours. All right. Wonderful. Well, thanks, Chris. Uh, thanks, Gina. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I love to see the poll beforehand. I actually do that when I'm in person. I'm like, okay, raise your hand if you are, you know, a, an expert at this. And I go through because it helps me figure out how to target that conversation um, when I'm doing an overview. I wish I could do one more poll. I know, I know we don't have time, but um, I would love to ask, does anyone know what SharePoint designer is? And I think that would tell a tale to help understand what Power Automate is, which Power Automate is really the successor uh, inside of the Microsoft suite to SharePoint designer. So, with that, um, hopefully that gave you a little bit more understanding. Um, I don't have a lot of time. I think, what do I have, 40 minutes, Chris, Gina? We're trying to keep it at uh, about 45 minutes and okay. if there's some Q&A in there. Perfect. All right, um, when I had prepared, I had 60 slides. Um, I, I really cut it down, <laughs> um, but I wanted to give you a, a, an opportunity to really understand what Power Automate is and the components. Um, to start off real quick with introducing myself. Um, I'm Michelle Gilbert. I'm from Minnesota. I lead the Microsoft 365 user group here in the Twin Cities. I also work at Microsoft. I'm a, a Teams, I would say, um, a technical specialist, but I focus on modern workplace and I help customers uh, and organizations around the North Central region um, adopt and use uh, the Office 365 suite and I'm a former MVP. Um, and here's all my contacts. So if you're interested in reaching out, feel free. Um, I tweet a lot. Um, I talk about current events, things that are happening inside of the Microsoft stack. Um, and then I'm on LinkedIn. So feel free to connect out there. And um, even though it says Microsoft Flow, that actually was what the original name was. And it's now called Power Automate. So um, a lot of the URLs are still similar using Flow. Um, but in this case, um, I'm just talking about how I've blogged a lot about solutions I've created. All right, so I think um, how I'd like to start is really talking about how um, using Power Automate is one of those things that's helping organizations today empower all the employees to focus on what matters most. Because if we spend our time uh, through uh, all these processes that sometimes are manual, half manual, half uh, automatic, uh, that can take a real long time and require people to do things, um, it's not as productive. And really the focus here is, is to make it more automated, 
so you are more effective in your job and more efficient. Um, hence, happier employment, right? Instead of all the other manual tasks that we've done over our career. And now, how can we automate that? And uh, that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. So the question is, why Power Automate? Um, uh, this is really a chance for you to figure out ways to simplify the way you work, the way your team works, um, the way your organization works. And Power Automate is that capability. Uh, like I had mentioned, and I'll talk about it again, it's the SharePoint successor, um, but it can extend out to multiple applications and your business, uh, business line applications and integrate to them to do that same type of automation. So at a high level, um, Power Automate is about end-to-end -end intelligence, automation for all. It's a low-code solution. Um, some people call it kind of a no-code. I still would call it a low-code. Um, it locks the ability to, uh, in your data, to connect with AI or artificial intelligence, uh, automating it um, and orchestrating it with built-in connectors. A lot of words, guys. Um, I want to show you where it really fits in the Microsoft Power Platform stack. Um, this is low code spanning through Office 365, connecting out to many things. However, it's a part of a family of a suite of, of products called Power Platform. And within Power Platform, you have Power BI. So if any of you are, are dashboard or BI lovers, you're probably familiar with Power BI. Um, if you know uh, InfoPath, Back in the day with SharePoint, uh, Power Apps is a successor to that. And then of course, Power Automate. And then we now have a new product called Power Virtual Agents. And that's something that's creating automation um, in a dynamic way. So I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty, but just wanna give you a broad view of the products within Power Platform. Uh, the next piece here is that native integration um, talking about Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, and Azure. These are the three cloud um, story that Microsoft talks a lot about. Dynamics um, is a CRM tool. Um, Azure can connect to many, many things. Uh, what I really wanted to call out here is that Power Automate crosses through all of the three clouds and then extending out to other applications. So, Really Power Automate is designed for everyone. Um, I know many of you uh, may not know a thing about coding or some of you may be really excellent at coding. Um, this sits really at the beginning of a coder's life. Um, it's really made to have you perform this, what's called citizen development. It can extend to pro developers and to IT admins. Um, I love showing this next slide because this next slide talks to more about when you develop flows within Power Automate, uh, you think of the, what's the complexity of what you're trying to achieve, and that really is the complexity of the solution. So really in the template section, I like to call out how that's really for the citizen development. Custom built-in flows, that's gonna be a little bit um, more advanced. And then the pro developed would be the IT pro, a person who is, has probably taken uh, development classes or courses and they knew how to do it, maybe a little bit more intricate things. Um, but I think of Power Automate, it's a lot like if you are a person who loves Excel and you know how to do formulas, this is for you. So it really is your, your ability to write very, very low code or even use templates and you don't have to write code. Um, it creates these uh, automation for you. So very sophisticated uh, without knowing a lot of things. Um, so the, the model here is all about working smarter um, and automating processes across your apps. Of course, we're living in an environment today that no matter if you're in the browser or if in a client app or on your mobile device, you should be able to get your same work done. Um, that's definitely what we think of as we all are transforming uh, to the cloud and doing that digital transformation in our organization. So having that same experience across the devices, uh, Power Automate um, brings that to you. So you can kick off flows from your phone. At a high level, um, I've been talking about and presenting on Power Automate actually since 2016. Uh, so it's ironic that you guys needed a conversation or someone to speak on this because it's certainly been um, a very popular subject uh, because it's really talking about how do we make things more 
So it launched quite uh, some time back. Uh, we've got over 1.6 million monthly active users today. And most likely within your organization, you are using it or people are using it. Uh, 300,000 organizations in 200 countries. So at the beginning, where do you start? Uh, you start pretty simply at flow.microsoft.com. You do not actually need um, anything other than that and your email address to get started. So you could use this for personal or for work. Um, I tend, tend to use it more for work, um, but I do have a, a personal account that I do some pretty neat flows on um, that help me. So I like to talk about Flow or Power Automate as there's four main components. Uh, it really helps you work smarter by getting notifications when you need them. So think of things like uh, somebody added a, a file on a share, in a SharePoint folder, you can get notified. Uh, copying files across different locations, uh, whether that's you get something in your email mailbox and you want to save it to OneDrive, you can have that automatically happen. You can collect data. Uh, a lot of times I like to use the example if you're running any type of Twitter campaign, um, Women in the Heartland, uh, if there's a hashtag out there on Twitter and you're doing a campaign to promote, uh, you can go ahead and create a Power Automate that will watch that hashtag for a certain period of time and write all those statistics to a SharePoint list. And then as it collects that information, now you can get more understanding of what that campaign was about by collecting every time somebody posted uh, that hashtag. Uh, it is amazing how much you can do. Um, but I'd say one of the main things that people are using this for, because we are talking about SharePoint uh, in a sense in Office 365 is approvals. Um, I've written uh, quite a few blogs on the different ways that you can have approvals. One of them is definitely vacation approval within a team. Uh, you can quickly set that up in SharePoint. I've also created something so as simple as a vacation request to as complex as in communications and in marketing, you may need um, to communicate something out. And traditionally what happens in organizations is that we use email, um, but there's been a shift over the years. And if you're using any type of enterprise social network like Yammer or something very team specific like Microsoft Teams or a SharePoint uh, intranet. Uh, so be, being that there are several ways, what if you could, if you could just simply put out a communication and have it automatically go to those places and even curate that message. Uh, so one click of a button to say publish a, a SharePoint intranet page and it goes to all these other locations. So the approvals are, are not just necessarily for somebody to approve something, but it could be page publishing approval. Um, so like I said, it can get really dynamic and really intelligent quickly. So how does Flow automate or how does Power Automate, shall I say, uh, automate those workflows? And then it's really by using connectors. Um, to understand connectors, I'm not gonna get terribly tech here, <laughs> but to understand them, um, they're considered kind of like an API um, that connects, so it's your account. Um, you all actually have several connectors. You have, you probably connect to Twitter. I imagine you connect to Facebook, maybe to Instagram, uh, to LinkedIn, Maybe you have a Microsoft Office 365 account, so you connect there. You may connect to um, several other business applications, your bank, all those are connectors. And they're really uh, your account that you log into. And if you think of uh, the Legos, right? Building Legos on top of Legos, that's kind of what building a Power Automate uh, flow will do because you have a connector that connects to another connector that connects to a connector. So think of, Okay, I'm going to create a SharePoint list. So there's my connector. And then I'm going, going to have that connect to Twitter. That's a connector to go reach a hashtag that I'm going to put in and to do a campaign about. And then when I connect those two together, now you've got kind of that authentication. So if you want to start something or trigger something, it will use that authentication to connect out. So hopefully I didn't lose you there. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about connectors. Currently, we have over 300 of them in Power Automate, um, and that includes first and third party services. So because these are all built in, um, you can connect out to any cloud application, but you can also connect down to perhaps 
you have a, a on-prem CRM system or a SQL server that you want to connect to. So there definitely um, is a lot expanding in that space today for you to uh, build upon um, and anything that you're using that you can connect to. And that's really that concept. So what's the components? Um, I don't know if, if you know, uh, but there has been this product years and years ago called If This Then That. Uh, and it really is taking, if you start this, then this will happen. Um, and it's a trigger and an action. So really each connector offers that set of operations. So if this happens, you can have a polling trigger that goes out to a service waiting for something to happen, like somebody put in that hashtag in Twitter. Or you can have a push where you can manually push the trigger to occur. You can do this with buttons as well. And then the next step is what's the action? What do you want it to do? There are three ways to start a flow. Uh, you can start it from blank. And so you can use an automated flow or scheduling it by clicking on a button. You can even um, wait for a time to occur and say, I want to, at this time, capture this. You can even start from a template. Um, to me, as the beginning, because many of you have never even heard of what I'm talking about, I would start here if you're interested. Uh, the simplest one, save an Office 365 email attachment to OneDrive. So no longer do you have to go hunt and peck in your inbox. What was that attachment? You already have a folder that captures them all. Um, so that's just a quick way. Another template that's out there, uh, get a push notification uh, when you receive an email from your boss. So on my phone, when my boss emails me, I get that popped up. I could be anywhere else in the world, but I get that pop up and then I can take action by either ignoring it or going into my mailbox and looking at it. And then the next one is starting from a connector. And that's where you can build connectors as you get a little more advanced into understanding uh, what you're trying to achieve to complete something that's uh, going to be more productive for you. Um, you can start building on what these connectors can do. All right, so the get started fast. Um, the, like I said, I think templates are the quickest way to do it. Uh, you can sign up with a single quick uh, or a click, meaning when you click on the template, it will go ahead and make sure that you have those connectors. And if you do, then it will automatically connect to them. And then you have your Power Automate. All you have to do is enable it at that point. So really 1,500 pre-configured templates um, all the way from what Microsoft has created to what other people have created that we saw value in and we brought it into the template store. All right, so to break it down, you first choose your connectors. You select your trigger and your action, what you want to accomplish. And then you add that dynamic content that you're trying to achieve to complete that flow. So uh, one example I like to talk about is uh, SharePoint. Um, if you're familiar with SharePoint enough, you know that approval is pretty high, highly uh, asked for when an item gets added. So in this example here, it's using a SharePoint connector and then it's using the Office 365 user because in this case, whoever is uploading the item to a SharePoint list, um, they want the manager to approve the item. And so that's hence where the Office 365 users come into play. So when those occur, then what happens is you get what's called this dashboard. And this is where you start can develop. Um, and then here's the first action or the first trigger is when a new item is created and then you have put in the URL. Um, in this case, it would be a dropdown and then the list that you want uh, to use for your approval. And then the set, send approver email. Um, you can do a couple of things here. You can go ahead and put in manager or you can hand code an email address. So just to review again, kind of what makes up that flow. Um, you have a trigger. So this is a notification here. Uh, you can have it manually kick off. You can do it on a schedule, but you first off, you need a URL. In this case, the example is from SharePoint and the list name, and then you have an action. So a trigger and an action. If you can walk away with anything, it's if this, then that. If they have a trigger, then, then what action would you like it to do? And this is something that we do daily. Um, I, I think of things that just around the house that I automate. Um, I ask Alexa, you know, what's the news? She tells me the news. Um, just this kind of like 
I'm expecting something to happen. And, and here I'm kind of configuring this. So once you set up your trigger and your action, now you're adding dynamic content. And dynamic content, what it does is it takes from what your SharePoint list is and you can pull in those columns. So you can have a column called assigned to email. You can pull in that column in the two. So when you're putting in a SharePoint list and you uh, are filling out your information in the assigned to field, you can have that be automatic or dynamic, or you can fill in an email address and then grab that column into the to file here. So in this case, kind of the components of the flow, it really starts with that event or a trigger. It can perform an enormous amount of actions. Uh, each connector has a set of, of triggers and a set of actions. And so there's a great, great documentation out there. Um, you can have conditional logic. So if, if the uh, email address, you may have multiple approvers. Um, I've certainly done where you have parallel approvers or you have uh, branching where one approves, now it goes to the next, they approve, now it goes to the next. Uh, and then you can also have your power automate or flow trigger other workflows. So once it's done here, now co go kick off this other workflow. So many of you are probably going, well, what happened to SharePoint Designer? Um, it, it is uh, certainly had great value over the years, um, but there are no new versions being developed on it. Um, Access Web Apps for a half a second um, was probably in that space to do some of the automation, um, but that has also been deprecated. So really the focus now and the successor to InfoPath and Access Web Apps um, and SharePoint Designer workflows is really Power Automate. So I want to show you inside of the SharePoint Modern Library where it's located. Here on the document library and in the list in SharePoint, just every modern site has this now where you have an item called Automate. And within there you can create a flow, you can see your flows or even configure your flows. And if you want to create a flow, then you actually have a left panel that comes out and it shows you a breakdown of example templates that you can use. And if one isn't there that you'd like to use, you go ahead and go into Power Automate itself and grab a template there. And it will automatically connect to that list as well as connect to um, that particular item. All right, here's a list of triggers. I'm not going to break it down too much. I cared more about um, you do see the triggers, you do see the actions, but just a couple of scenarios to walk through. Uh, real quick, human resources is really the biggest department I've seen using Power Automate uh, for onboarding new employees. Um, it's extremely easy. Uh, it can actually look at a Word document field. It can look at a PDF. If that item is signed, then it kicks off a Power Automate flow to go get a mobile notification if it's signed, then it can go into a SharePoint list. If, the if there is an approval that's required, go out to the hiring manager for approval. The hiring manager can approve it, which then can kick off an automatic welcome email and then set up an entire area for this person when they start, they have all their resources. So the amount of time that it took prior to that and the amount of emails that it took to do that communication um, was pretty incredible uh, and very manual and very labor intensive. Uh, and now you can just kick off things by if things are filled out and then we collected it and then we had something to prove. Um, and then um, as a result, there is an email that goes out and then another um, communication to the team to say, this person's been hired, prepare on this date, make sure we have uh, coffee and bagels ready when they enter the door and you know all these things that that just took so much time to do is so easy now with with automating it. Another one processing approvals. Um, I definitely have seen contract approval being used with Power Automate a lot. Um, of course there's always vacation approvals, teams trying to do that, issue tracking, lead generation, um, but the biggest I guess takeaway here in the process approval is about when the life cycle of a contract or of sale or of lead generation goes through its course. A lot of times we have to manually do something um, using Power Automate. It can watch and say, this folder changes its status from um, started to in process. 
now contact the vendor um, to ask for more information by sending this form. The vendor fills in that form. Now that the form is filled out and submitted, this person gets alerted. This alert person gets alerted, maybe not even through email anymore, maybe on Microsoft Teams that the person's done, they go and change that status or even change the status of that contract automatically to completed, which then could trigger um, that information to get sent to your CRM system. So there is a lot of really great things and cool things to make things so much faster. I think I'm probably close to time. This is my last slide. Uh, I'd love to be able to give you more hands-on to see, um, but hopefully this gives you something more conceptual. But this one is about tracking leads. Um, I talked a little bit about that, but just tracking a sales lead uh, process, uh, walking through the cycle of the opportunity uh, to the sale and then to the close of the sale, even to the shipping. So connecting your shipping system, your CRM system, all these extended third-party applications that you use today, making all that integrated and then the communication automated. Um, it's been pretty fantastic. So I don't wanna leave you um, empty. Uh, I wanna show you that you can learn at all levels. A lot of you are beginners. There is an easy get started path. If you're interested, you can walk through, look at the videos, see, how, see the examples, um, and you can then graduate. and you know, go to more expert path, as well as joining the Power Automate community. Uh, there is plenty here. There is a ton of community resources on what people are doing in this space, what companies are doing in this space to help uh, their employees be more efficient, their processes be more productive. Um, so that's really a fantastic way. Um, so there you go. That's uh, all I wanted to share on elevating your business with Microsoft Power Automate. Any questions? Thank you very much, Michelle. We do have, there was a, a question that popped up and um, this might apply to a few technologies, but um, there was a question about how does this compare to Smartsheet? Um, and I, I think similarly like to um, IFTTT, um, mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with the IFTTT. I am familiar with Smartsheet. I think there's a couple of other technologies that might be similar. Um, like Robin had mentioned, maybe they use uh, service now orchestration. Um, sure. How does that compare? Um, let me, I'm going to share a screen here. So this is Power Automate and I'm in a demo environment. How it, how it compares, one is it's a um, automation product that's a part of your Office 365 suite. So if you are licensed for that, you automatically get it. Um, you have what's called standard uh, connectors and premium connectors. Uh, I believe Smartsheet is an app that you can connect to. Um, and Salesforce, you can connect to Salesforce, you can connect to Workday. I mean, you can connect to basically anything. If I look at the connectors here, uh, there are a ton of things that I'm doing with customers today to automate um, the ability to connect and have things enter into Workday or get alerted when there's a high alert in ServiceNow. Um, hopefully that's, that's answering your questions, but just to show you, um, show you service now. Of course. <laughs> it's just yeah. one word. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Here we go. So service now, that's a premium connector. So you have what's called standard connectors. Uh, and then you have premium connectors, premium, and that goes back to the licensing conversation. Um, I believe now the licensing is based on flow or five flows, but um, I really wanted to showcase what you can do in SharePoint and you already own Power Automate and Power Apps as a part of your Office 365 package. To extend it, you would then use these premium connectors. Okay. And I, I didn't, um, oh, let, there was a question if there was a connector to um, UltiPro, U-L-T-I yeah. Pro, okay. Yep, I know UltiPro. Yeah. UltiPro, yes, there is. Uh, I'm uh, not positive on that, let me just, yeah, oh. I don't think so. But it might not be under UltiPro, it might be under like 
I don't know. They're there. They get like three or four added per week. So I used to stay on top of it. Um, and then I stopped. <laughs> Um, and this is actually, this is really good. And I, I, it's hard in this uh, short time frame to, you know, get in depth, but I'm curious um, of maybe what your top examples might be um, of real world scenarios where it's being used. And I, I like, there's kind of three things as you were talking about this that came to mind. I like the fact that you use it personally. I would be curious about an example of just um, a, a real life scenario for how someone might use this in their personal life. And then um, you mentioned approvals, um, but then I was also curious about other things like um, how you might use this for uh, compiling or curating data. I, I'm not sure, you know, um, I'm sure there's a lot that it can do, but if you had an example of, of a common uh, use case that would apply to that, uh, going out, gathering data and bringing it back together. Got it. Um, the nice thing about the start from a template here, um, I've got top picks, but there are they're they're almost categorized about remote work um, approval oh. data collection, which is really fantastic. So you don't have to think. Um, <laughs> and when you want to get to that next point to be more advanced, you can and do things. But they already have pre-built 1,500 templates that people are doing today on you know, remote work on approval. So in the, the approval spectrum, um, started approval when a new items added, uh, request manager approval for a select file, it's pretty common. And what you can see here is you've got the number of flows made with this template. So you can see how popular this particular template has been used, um, all the way from uh, data collection. So uh, record form response in SharePoint, if you don't know what forms are, uh, they are your um, equivalent to SurveyMonkey, but they're a part of Office 365. So you can do surveys or quizzes uh, and send them out to everyone in your organization or even outside. And then based on their form um, survey results, you can have that uh, tie back and even write back to SharePoint. So you can rec record them all. Um, but anyway, I think there's endless ones. I'll, I'll say the personal one that I use uh, when I said I do have, I do use it personally. Um, I am a captain of a boat uh, on the Mississippi River, and one of the main things that I need to know is wind speed, um, especially if I'm traveling far. So on my phone, I've got Power Automate, and I've got a button which you can use buttons, and I couldn't talk about that because there's so much to talk about. But I click the button to say check wind speed, and it will check where my GPS of my phone is and return the wind speed for that area. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. That's really cool. And um, well, first of all, fascinating that you're a boat captain. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. I have a whole bunch of questions around that that don't apply to this. <laughs> um, but then another question coming in from our attendees is, what is the best way a small business could leverage this? Um, I would say if you're already using Office 365 Business, um, I would start, I think, like I said, the early, the, the easiest place is from templates to see if any of these are applicable to you uh, through remote work, through approval, through calendar. Uh, I really like the productivity one. I know I'm kind of cruising through this a little bit, um, mm -hmm. but I would say the first place to start besides looking at the templates to see if they add value for your business is to go into the learn section. Um, by clicking on learn, that was the area that you can start doing your journey towards learning about how to do Power Automate. So you can get started quickly. Here's the button flows I was referring to. So you can, you can have things, send an email to remind your team to join a meeting, right, right from your phone. Um, they're pretty funny, and they're, but they're really fun and useful too um, that you can do with buttons. But I would say it's exploring. Oh, that's fantastic. I love if, if I used it just for that right there, I think I would get I would get my full use out of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for the for everyone um, attending, um, any questions that you want to just ask? Um, you know, you, you're welcome to unmute yourself if there's anything that you just have an urge to ask right now. You don't have to send it in chat. Well, this is Gina. There was one under remote work that said block my my calendar for an hour. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm just curious because oh. it looks like they'd be a 
fairly simple one to see. And so just from, for me to learn, I like to see how it actually looks. Okay, so that's, that's it. Yep, that's it. So it will, when I click on it, it'll show the connectors it uses. Mm -hmm. um, it's gonna connect to this. I'm in a demo tenant and it has a green check mark, which means it's good to go. I can just hit continue and it builds it for me, my hands free. Um, <laughs> and here is manually trigger a flow. So that means I'm gonna get a button to use and then I select my calendar. So I'm just filling in information like you normally would. Uh -huh. I'm just gonna use my regular calendar. Uh, calendar black from Microsoft flow will be the subject as it'll come in. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually fantastic, not to just block it for being down through remote um, time, but also to e quickly extend a meeting that you're in. So you just hit the button, it goes extend the current meeting you're in. I use that one too. Um, and then you gotta play with your, your time, start time and then end time. I'll go ahead and hit save. Can I just add that um, when I first got into flows, I found this very helpful to go through the templates because they kind of give you an outline of how they use the, the expressions and the formulas. And it, it helps you understand how to how to build your own and go beyond the templates. That's a great idea. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Rachel. Alright, so here is where I would just run it if I want to edit it. And then I can also share it. So any number of these that I think are super cool or valuable, I can export as a package and send it to you, Chris, if you, you're like, oh, that's really cool. I can send it to you. You can upload it and you can begin to use it by just changing the connector. So, and then, so silly question on my part. So now that you, let's say you shared that with me, do I share that, do I keep that like as an icon on my desktop? And so anytime I want to block an hour, I can just double click the icon and it's done or? Um, actually, what will happen is, it? yeah, you'll import it and it'll be here. So there's a couple of ways you, you've got uh, you've got this dashboard. Let me just go ahead and since that one's got a manual trigger. I was wondering how, what basically right where the buttons are located. Yeah, um, the buttons are located either right here by doing it. Um, but I consider buttons and I, I wish let's see if I um, I use buttons more for my mobile device. So okay. when I download power automate. Um, I don't know if I can quickly get in. Um, but then you can when you open up power automate you'll see all your buttons. Okay. And can you yes. save an individual button like right to your home screen or do you have to open up Power Automate and then choose a button from there? Yeah, you do have to open it up Power Automate. Okay. Um, but you can use physical buttons. So I don't have an example quickly, but you can have flick buttons on your desk that this is a funny uh, story, but I had a flick button. I was testing this out um, next to my bedside. So then if I was sick, I could click on that and it would email my entire team that I'm going to be off for the day. I'm not feeling well with just a button. <laughs> I love and that. It worked. It was great. For migraine sufferers, that is brilliant. Yes. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Another great uh, personal use item, which I, I mean, I could see all kinds of places this could go. Like once you get it, once you get this under your belt, being able to um, do, do more things with data and compiling data. Um, you know, I just think something happening in, in every, at every company today is just needing to get data in the hands of our business users. Um, it need, they need an easier way to access it, compile it, um, you, you know, have some analytics, some simple things, uh, you know, I don't know how complex this can support or manage, but from a dashboarding perspective and pull that together so that they can have an at a glance view to um, various metrics. And, um, you know, so this looks like another tool that can help support that happening. Yeah, yeah I think so. And I, I've been using, um, that's another fun one that uh, for connecting I do a lot of conferencing, um, and so this one's kind of fun. It's called Let, Let's Connect, and basically what I do is I have a trigger. So I put in the person's name, or I hand them my phone, and they fill it out. First name, last name, email address, where did we meet? And then what happens, It can you can have it wait for a day. So pause for a day, and then send the email to the person based on the email address you entered. Great to meet you with the first name here. And 
we should stay connected. So I wanted to send over all my details and I put in LinkedIn, I would put in Twitter, email, and then I'd say, let's stay in touch. And I could even say, um, it was great to meet you at, and then it would bring in this dynamic content of that location. So just a fun way. Um, I could even have it sent to my Outlook uh, contact list and be added as a contact. I really appreciate just some of the practical things here and just for, for me and the way that I learn, it's helpful to actually see it in the tool. So thanks for taking the time sure. to, to bring us in there. And just to me, that just adds a little bit more reality to all the discussion that you've provided. I really appreciate that. So I you think, bet. Chris, are, are yeah. you good with us for, I'm thinking yeah. it's about time to do some small group discussion, maybe. I think it is. So um, have you already made me to take it from there? Or have you yeah. Got so, it? Nope. Uh, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I just did put the instructions out there. We do have, we're going to break you up into small groups. And so if you've been on these in the past or maybe in other, in other Zoom lives, uh, what I will do is create some small groups. Uh, we currently have 29 of us. So how about I break us in, into seven rooms? Um, so that way you'll have about four people in your room. So if you could introduce yourself, your company, and your role, and just share one word. If you could use one word to describe the last half hour, 45 minutes, what would it be? And so for me, um, since I won't be in one of your small groups, I'd say the word is just possibilities as an example there. So as your small group, you get to decide which of your one words you're going to bring back here. And we'll do a quick one word whip when we all come back together. But otherwise, just with, when you're within your group, just kind of talk about what features of Power Automate you see your, yourself, your organization using, um, what barriers do you see in adapting it, and how might you overcome those barriers? Those instructions are also right there in the chat. And so you should still have that information available when you go into your small groups. But above all else in the small groups, what we really want you to be able to do is to get to know each other. So um, take the time to do that and make sure you're really getting to know each other. That's, there's just value in networking. Um, and I, that's hard to do with, uh, with 28 people all at once. So we're gonna send you off. I'm going to pause.